Welcome back to Gamer Sanctuary. It is Sunday. Uh, there's a 40k tournament going on over here, which is pretty cool, but we are not participating in that today because uh, we realized a couple weeks ago that about half of our guys have never played Necromunda. And I believe uh, the Thursday night Necromunda night scheduled for at Adepticon this year has seven Fresh Coast gamers playing in it. Uh, so we decided that it'd probably be a good idea to introduce them to, in my opinion, the best game GW has ever made. Uh, and that's Necromunda. So what we're going to do today is uh, uh, just play a, an introduction game. Uh, a couple of us have played it before. John and I are old, old hands at, at Necromunda. We've been playing it for years. But uh, Jeremy and uh, Jeff have never, ever touched the game. So um, we set up a table. We're going to use a 4 by 6 table. We've loaded it with our, our terrain. Uh, the guys already put gangs together today. Um, we, part of this whole process was learning how to assemble a gang. And then uh, we're going to play. So let's check out and see uh, what everyone's got. All right, this is is uh, pretty much exactly the gang I'm going to be bringing to Adepticon. Uh, we have 200 more points to play with at Adepticon and a lot more choices in, uh, in equipment. But uh, this is my Redemptionist gang. This, this is the the uh, Temple of Syrinx. Uh, bonus points if you can uh, uh, <laughs> pick out the the reference in that one. Uh, I have a priest with a melted gun and a sword. Uh, I believe he's got a stub gun. I have a deacon with a flamer and a stub gun. I have two zealots with eviscerators. Uh, I have one, two, three, four brethren, or excuse me, four crusaders, uh, one with a shotgun, two with auto guns and exterminator one-shot flamers, one with a stub gun and an auto pistol, and then I have two devotees with double flails right here in the, in the front. Lots of close combat, lots of, uh, you're going to see me hugging terrain an awful lot and getting close enough to hit him with any of my flame weapons. Take a look at Jeremy's gang. Jeremy inherited a second-hand Goliath gang. He's got lots of pieces. Um, so he's got a leader with a chainsword and a grenade launcher. Uh, a heavy with a custom heavy bolter from a Space Marine kit. Uh, a lot of people don't like heavy bolters in Necromunda. I think they're crazy. I think heavy bolters own. I've always uh, managed to earn my points back with it every game. I feel if I can guaranteed take out one, maybe two models with it before I run out of ammo, that's more than worth it. Uh, he's got a couple guys with shotguns, a couple gangers with shotguns, uh, las guns, two right here, uh, and an auto gun in the back. Actually, I'm sorry, no, there's an auto gun here, another las gun in the back, and then a juve with a stub gun. A couple pistols and other things in a, uh, laying around here as well. The leader has frag grenades for his launcher. Jeff is going to be using my Orlock gang that I kit bashed from, uh, not, even, not really kit bashed, I mean, it's, it's an Imperial Guard squad. Uh, it's Katakin Guards with a couple extra pieces of gear. Um, my first gang I ever played when I was a kid. Uh, what were Orlocks? I had the original Orlock ganger kit. Uh, I've long since lost that or sold it or whatever, um, but I was feeling nostalgic for them a couple years ago, so I rebuilt them. Uh, their backstory, uh, they're called the Brews. They are a, a Jewish gang uh, that raided an imperial armory, so they are all armed with uh, very high quality weapons. Uh, Herschel's their leader. He's got a bolter and chainsword. Uh, we've got a heavy bolter and a las pistol. Everyone has a las pistol, actually, to back up. Uh, but heavy bolter right here. We've got a flamer right here. Shotgun. Three gangers with las guns. And then two juves with las pistols. All right. Uh, John showed up, and uh, we managed to kit bash together a, uh, a squad for him out of Jeremy's dead zone guys. Uh, so, they're, obviously, they're not going to be whizzy wing to everything, uh, but they're going to be pretty darn close. So, we've got a, a leader with a last pistol and a sword with some grenades, two heavies with heavy stubbers, uh, two gangers with uh, shotguns right here, shotguns and pistols. Uh, and we have four juves. They all have last pistols, knives, and uh, one thing one has a crack grenade, and the other has a fried grenade as well. This is the table we're going to be playing on. Uh, you can see we have it kind of divided into sections. We have Jeremy's dead zone terrain here, which makes great Necromunda terrain. It really looks like the old school uh, plastic and cardboard kits. Uh, part of the reason why we love it. Uh, the, all these buildings in the middle are stuff that Jeff has sitting in his house. Just kind of doing what? What is this stuff just doing in your house and not on our tables, Jeff? So he brought it out today. I particularly love this centerpiece right here. It's huge. Uh, the Aquila's on the other side of it. I'm not going to walk around the table to see that, but we've got another one right here. Uh, the pump house looking thing right here is awesome. Looking forward to getting, getting all this stuff uh, uh, riddled with some, some bullet holes. Back over here, we've got some of the stuff I picked up a couple years ago from Brush for Hire. We've got the gatehouse and the platform as well. So this is our table. We are going to be playing uh, the, uh, I can't remember what the mission's called. It is Scavenger. We have 12 loot counters scattered around the table. They are all over the place. Uh, the, we're going to be playing all four players on one table, and the, the mission is just grab as much of the loot as you can. 
So let's get uh, get stuff on the table and get started. All right, here, so here we are. Uh, we all have our guys deployed. I got the 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 last deployment, which meant I got the the quarter with the least amount of cover. So I've got everything kind of split here. Uh, John's being brave and just standing out in the middle of nowhere with these guys. Uh, he's got some guys who are hugging some cover here. Uh, Jeff, kind of the same thing. He's got his guys out in the open. Uh, and Jeremy took the high ground with his heavy bolter, getting ready to shoot things. I think uh, Jeff has his heavy bolter up here. Yeah, he's hiding in the tower too. Uh, Jeff actually has a first turn, so he's going to go first. Then John, then me, and Jeremy. We actually rolled that legitimately clockwise, so uh, it wasn't just like we said one person wins and the rest of it go after that. So Jeff's going to go. We'll do, do his turn, and then uh, John's, then mine, and Jeremy's. So the Bruise advanced forward. Um, we had a shotgunner shoot at one of the gangers in the open and did nothing to him over there, one of the Goliaths. Uh, we had this last gunner right here shot at... Uh, one of John's gang. We gotta get a, get a name for them in a second. Down here, dropped him, so he is down but not out. Uh, but the big news was the heavy bolter over here fired at the uh, the two Goliaths over there that are both down. The Juve has taken a flesh wound, and the other guy is down right now. Um, and the heavy bolter is out of ammunition. But I, like I said, it's always worth it. I think he, you know, having dropped two guys, uh, that that puts puts Jeremy in the hole big time, and it got. Uh, Two wounding hits on him, which in most Necromunda games, that's 10 experience points. So it's definitely worth it, in my opinion. Especially early in the campaign. So we're going to move into John's turn. All right, John's great plastic storm guys decided to uh, split up again. Uh, well, I'll start over here because he uh, had a little more success on this side. Uh, he had a last gun shoot at my deacon and missed. Uh, the heavy stubber split fires between my deacon and my brethren right there. Um, Missed the deacon completely with three shots. The brethren took two, got one wound, and is just down. Uh, so he's going to start crawling to some cover. Uh, over here, though, the only thing John had to shoot at was uh, the ganger who shot at his, at his juve. So he, he, he dumped six shots from this heavy stubber into that uh, ganger and hit him, what, four times? Three times. Hit him three times and failed to wound all three times. So that guy's just pinned. So we're going to go into my turn. And uh, see what I can do. All right, my turn. Uh, my deacon moved forward here and took a pistol shot at that uh, ganger right there and pinned him. Uh, did not uh, did not wound him. Uh, my zealots and my uh, devotees all ran. So did my leader with his melted gun over here. Uh, and this ganger up here with the auto gun ran up and got up onto the uh, platform for some shots. The shotgunner over here just walked forward and tried a long shot at that Goliath right there. Needed a six and didn't hit it. Um, but I have one auto gunner down here who threw some of the girders, I don't know if you can really see it, back over here, dropped that ganger who was holding that loot crate, right there, did a wound, and they are down. So now we're gonna go into Jeremy's turn. All right, Jeremy's turn. Uh, he brought some guys over to this barricade, and uh, he had a, a shotgunner take out my, uh, my Zealot, which is a good shot right there. He had his last gunner take out my devotee. The devotee only has a flesh wound though, so he's going to be able to get right back up. Um, his heavy bolter aimed at, the, at uh, Jeff's two juves down there. Uh, managed to flesh wound the first one and missed the second one completely, but no ammo checks needed. So uh, that was pretty good. Uh, and in other news, his juve, who had a flesh wound, stood right back up because he was next to within two inches of a ganger. He was all, he was all set there. The other guy is still down. Uh, oh, and he grabbed. He, he moved a guy up to the. Uh, Top of the platform to grab that objective. Up. I didn't quite make it to the objective. Almost there, yeah. My goal is there. All right, Jeff's turn two. <laughs> All right, Jeff's gangers over here. Uh, the, the Jew stood up at the end of the turn. I'll just get that out of the way right now. Everything else kind of advanced and tried to take out Jeremy's Jew standing here on the corner. And like a like a little mini weightlifting boss, he withstood it all. Not, no wounds, no hits on him. Uh, his heavy, who was out of ammo for the heavy bolter, jumped down through the uh, the the. Uh, Trap door here and came out the door here, so he's good. Getting ready to join the fight with the last pistol. Uh, over here, though, this guy came running through, charged the juve that was right here, kicked his butt in combat, and then consolidated back into the uh, building. I think he, it, he was a little closer than that. He wasn't quite that far away, I guess. Uh, and the leader's over here getting ready to grab that objective. Other than that, he took up some position. Uh, the flamer tried to come around the corner right here and toast this little dude. Uh, right here, he was just in range enough to clip his base. Uh, he did hit him on a, on a four plus, but did no wound. No, no, you didn't. Oh, he didn't hit him at all. Okay, he didn't hit him at all. My bad. So nothing happened, but he he made his arm his uh, ammo roll, so the flamer is not out of juice. Coming into John's turn to all right. John's heavy stubber continues to drive me mad. Um, 
Actually, I shouldn't say that because uh, he's he's getting five shots apiece at my guys over here. He dropped my uh, zealot, but put three shots on my deacon who was within four inches and whiffed him again. So the deacon is, has has had six shots come at him and not been touched. Um, but the heavy bolter or the heavy stubber is kind of racking up hits. That one goes into Overwatch to get ready for Jeff's guys coming around the corner. He had a shotgunner take out the ganger in the door. I'm sorry, pinned him right, didn't pinned. didn't wound him. And then his Juve came around the corner with a chain and smacked uh, Jeff's flamer dude in the face. Uh, so the Juve got himself some experience. Yay, Juves! Gonna move into my turn and uh, hopefully I can push forward and not be uh, <laughs> pinned back here with no cover again. I continue to inch a little closer. My deacon, the unkillable deacon, comes forward and is hugging the barricade and pinned that uh, that ganger right there, uh, so that uh, they have to stand up next turn. The eviscerator just kind of crawled into cover. Same thing over here with this brethren. They both are still down at the end of the turn. That brethren came around the corner and shot at the heavy stubborn and missed. Um, my devotee is getting ready to come out there and whip some flails at somebody. Uh, over here, I had a brethren come up here. My leader. Came around here, the priest came around the corner and shot at Jeremy's leader, who tried to overwatch him with his stub gun. He missed. Uh, I missed with my melted gun, which is bad for me. Uh, but I had a lucky shotgun shot right here. My ganger came up, or my brethren came up here, and scatter shot both of them. I hit on a dead six and knocked them both down. They both pinned. The one over here on the right, though, is down. The one on the left is just pinned. And I use my priest ability to uh, to get one of my pin models up on that uh, devotee right there. So he got up and is now in their face getting ready to, to hit somebody with some flails. Jeremy's turn coming up. Oh, my uh, my zealot who was over here though, failed his uh, his wound roll and he is out for the game. Because I already used the priest's ability to re-roll that uh, on the, uh, the devotee. All right, Goliath's turn. The, the brofist Goliath team. We got the guy who grabbed the objective, ran back down here before Jeremy can knock that tower over again. Um, everything tried to clear out that devotee who was standing there so that Jeremy can get a good shot at my leader with the heavy bolter. Unfortunately, um, everything failed so that he had to rely on the heavy bolter to take it out and he did it in spectacular fashion. Uh, but now the heavy bolter is out of ammo. Uh, in other news, the guy who was down here went out, the guy who was pinned stood up, and this guy stood up with a flesh wound. So Jeremy's got a bunch of flesh wounds running around and uh, that's it. Moving into Jeff's turn. You can't. All right, Jeff's turn. Um, Heavy came around the corner and took a shot at uh, this ganger right here. Didn't do anything though, he missed with his last pistol. Uh, the leader came into the window and shot down here at this juve and pinned him. That's it. Uh, otherwise, it was uh, not much of a turn. He had a couple more guys come around here and, oh wait, he did He did actually flesh wound that, that ganger down there as well. <coughs> Excuse me, so he's taking two flesh wounds but he's not out of the fight. John's coming up. All right, John continues to, to hold his own back over here. Uh, he brought his guys out to try to take out my deacon. Uh, the leader and the juve both missed, but the stubborn turned and hit him again with an obscene amount of shots, or excuse me, fired an obscene amount of shots at him. Only hit him one time though, but it was enough and he actually took him out. So the deacon, the unkillable deacon took what? 15 shots or something crazy like this game it was nuts. Um, over here, the heavy stubber aimed at the two juves down there and dropped the first one, but did nothing in the second. And this combat over here, we had a juve charging into the uh, the ganger right there, and uh, that combat just stalled. Nobody did. John got one hit because he charged. He got the plus one for that and uh, failed to move. Moving into my turn, I made my bottle check. I'm down to 50%, to but I made my roll, so we're gonna keep fighting. All right, uh, over here, my leader came up behind the barrels and shot at Jeremy's leader. Roll the two, even though I was in short range, I still missed thanks to the cover. That melt gun is just whiffing. If I hit with it, it'd be great, but I'm not, so. Uh, however, this shotgun dude has been having a great game. He dropped the leader with a solid shot, but ran out of ammo for it. Uh, the auto gunner failed to drop that shotgunner right there. Uh, over here, Oh, I still got to make my recovery rolls for these two guys. Um, this auto gunner shot at uh, John's heavy to try to take him down, but missed badly. Uh, but my devotee, who was right around here, charged his guy who was down. I know it's kind of cheesy to do it, but I took him out. And because I got a consolidation move of two inches, it put me into combat with the other juve, right? That's a juve. Mm -hmm. So now he's in combat with that juve, and we're going to have this big old juve slap fight in a minute. But uh, <laughs> they're both holding objectives, so it's going to be great. So the winner of that fight is not only going to have Juve Dominion, he's going to get two objectives. Pretty cool. So anyway, uh, I'm still I'm still safe from having the bottle out, and um, 
We're going to move into Jeremy's turn. Hey, I had some good luck. My uh, ganger back here rolled a one on his uh, recovery roll, so he actually stood back up at the end of my turn. Um, I did use my uh, my leader's my priest ability to reroll his, uh, but my so my eviscerator guy is still there. <laughs> Jeremy's Jeremy's turn. Um, his his leader stayed down. Uh, he had a ganger over there who decided he was going to try to take my leader on one on one, and got in there, got in the fight, uh, almost hit the combat with his uh, his heavy who moved down to this level here, shot with a pistol and uh, missed the original target, which was my guy back here hiding in the behind the wall. Almost hit the fight. Anyway, the guy who charged in. Uh, we, we tied combat. I, I rolled a five, he rolled a four, but I have a higher weapon skill even though I fumbled. It gave me one attack because it went to initiative score, and I killed his ganger with my leader, so he impaled himself on my sword. Very cool. Uh, I consolidated onto that objective to grab it. Um, otherwise, that's about it. The Juve ran up there to grab that objective and is running away with it. And we're moving forward into Jeff's turn. Oh, we did feel, we, did, we realized also we've been making bottle checks at 50% and you should be making them at 25. Um, we were kind of hung up on the uh, Heralds of Ruin kill team rules, which I believe are at 50%. But we're just going to play the entire game with 50% bottling tests and go from there. All right, over here with Jeff's turn. The heavy charged into combat with the, uh, the Juve and the, uh, the ganger right here. Um, the Juve and the ganger actually had a complete draw because they're the same initiative. And then the, the heavy got the extra bonus die and the plus one for charging in. Uh, as a, the multiple opponents, so he actually was a plus two total, minus one for having the heavy weapon. Regardless, he got three hits on the Juve and killed him. Um, but Jeff grabbed the objective here, and his Juve, who was beat up over here, is uh, standing up with a flesh wound. So now we're going to go into John's next turn. All right, so here we are with John's turn again. His heavy stubbers continue to be effective. Uh, he dropped the shotgunner over there with a good uh, with a good shot. He had six shots against uh, those uh, those two guys back there, but he didn't do anything against the Juve with the flesh wound. Over here, his heavy stubber turned and dropped my uh, my brethren right here. Um, and he had his leader and another ganger charge into my Juve in combat. He went with the Juve first, and we, we both rolled sixes, no fumbles, so it was a total draw. And then the other ganger came in, and I rolled a terribly. I rolled a one and a two, and he, uh, he rolled, I believe, a six to hit, so it was bad for me. He had five hits on my poor little devotee, and he's dead. Um, so John has a whole bunch of objectives right now. And we're going to go into my turn. i got to make a bottle check and then see if, uh, if I as luck would have it. I rolled an 11 for my bottle check, so I'm out of the game. Jeremy is going to go next. All right, he's running. Yeah, go grab some All right, Jeremy's turn. Uh, Jeremy, what happened? I was busy picking my models up off the table. All right, uh, basically this guy ran over, grabbed his objective. My leader huh? stayed down. This guy came down the base. He moved over four, took a shot at that Juve. Actually uh, did a flush one to yep. him, which is enough to kill him. Yep, he's already had my one. My Juve ran inside of this building. His Where is he? Ultimate, he's inside. Where is he? The very corner. You got to go around the there other side to see him. There he is. His ultimate goal is to get up to the next stage. He's going to try to get that objective on the objective. top. He's going to grab three. <laughs> so Jeremy's just been kind of quietly <laughs> holding his own and collecting objectives. And that's, it. Uh, and that's it. So we're going to go into Jeff's turn. Jeff is actually going to bottle out, I think you said. Yep. Because so. he's down to 50% and he's kind of beat up and doesn't want to lose anybody else. Was this your one that you So we're actually going to go to... Okay, for John's, John's turn, turn, he had um, everyone kind of pulled back into the little temple thing there and tried to shoot at that Jew who was holding multiple objectives and failed. Jeremy's only one uh, objective away from having to bottle... Or one model away from having to bottle out. We're having to, to make a roll, so we're actually probably going to call it at the end of this turn. I think we, this is going to be turn six as it is uh, with John's. Yeah, John's turn is turn six. So John's going to go. Jeremy's going to get one more chance to get that objective, and uh, we'll see what happens at the end of it. All right, so here we are at the end of the sixth turn of the game, we think. I don't know. We kind of lost track, um, but we're going to call it because it's getting late in the day. Uh, Jeremy has four objectives. His Juve has two up here. He's got uh, one guy with one down here and the guy running away with that one over there to John's two. So four to two, Jeremy's going to win. Uh, and like I said, this is for us uh, a tutorial game, so really it's all about learning how to play the game. We're not really doing this as a campaign game. So uh, we're going to go through the experience phase because that is part of Adepticon, uh, but we're not going to go through shopping or anything else like that because um, we don't get a chance to go visit the, uh, the markets in, uh, in uh, Necromunda at night. So thanks again for watching, and hopefully we'll do some more of this kind of stuff coming up, but we are really hardcore getting into Adepticon. Some of us are getting super pumped, right, Jeremy? Yeah, that's your pump face. Thanks. All right, see you later.